You, friends, you're on the right track. Amen. Don't be deceived. All right? Don't be deceived by that. That's just a lack of culture. Okay? When people take the time to badmouth another ministry. You notice that I don't take the time to badmouth other Christian ministries in this state. Not by name. Are you noticing that? Yeah. I won't do it on TV. I won't do it privately with you. Okay? And the reason why I won't do that is can the hand say to the foot, I have no need of thee? Can the uh, you know, ear, the eye, nose, foot, hand, whatever I say, I have no need, need of thee. Amen? We have need of one another. So we can't be beaten up on one another. But when it comes to someone saying, oh, that's not going to happen, that's not going to come to pass, oh, I, I just don't believe that, friends, they may not be hearing from God. Don't take it everywhere. All right? Do not cast your pearls before swine. Now let's go over to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. And I am, again, the Lord spoke to me last night and this morning and said, David, I'm not going to give you everything about your message prior to your message. You're going to speak things out prophetically that you didn't plan on. That last dissertation, I didn't plan on. Amen. So, Luke chapter 11, starting in uh, verse 15. But some of them said, he cast out demons by Beelzebub, the ruler of demons. Others, to test him, were demanding of him a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, Any kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and a house divided against itself falls. If Satan is also divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebub. And if I, by Beelzebub, cast out demons, by whom do your sons cast them out? So they will be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own house, his possessions are undisturbed. But when someone stronger than he attacks him and overpowers him, he takes away from him all of his armor on which he had relied and distributes his plunder. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. Now, this whole section talks about having a divided house, having a divided kingdom. And I just want to tell you here, in 2010, we are going to see a greater division between Christians as the love of the truth grows cold. We're going to see Christians that do not want to deal with the truth. We saw it in 2009. I predicted it at the beginning of 2009. We saw it in 2009. We saw those things happening in 2008, a division between different types of churches in the United States, that their love grows, love of the truth growing so cold. And remember, that's a love in, inside. We've talked about this re- for the last eight weeks. We talked about this, nine weeks. That you have to have a love of the truth or have the contract of love inside of you to want the truth so much that you will not allow yourself to be deceived by anything, not even your own mind. And we talk about uh, loving the truth. You know, you think about loving the truth this way. You buy a gallon of milk. Your wife tells you to buy a gallon of milk. You buy a gallon of milk. But your wife says, don't get it at that fast, you know, gas station place there. You know, because it's like, you know, an extra 20 cents more for a gallon of milk. Buy it over at the supermarket because you'll save yourself 20 cents on a gallon. You buy the gallon of milk at the place you told you not to buy it at. And all the way home, you think of all the lies you're going to tell her as to why you bought that milk there. First lie will be out of your mouth will be, no, I actually bought it at that supermarket and they just were up 20 cents and they must have got it from over there. They must have run out and bought it over there because that's why there's sticker, fast gas station sticker on there. (laughs) If that lie doesn't work, you have another backup lie. And that backup lie is, uh, well, I was almost out of gas and didn't have, I could either get the milk or the gas, and I decided to get the milk, and I knew you really needed the milk. The next lie could be, uh, well, you know, I was told that they have fresher milk over there, so I wasn't going to listen to you anyway. And so we dream up all these lies all the way home. In other words, we're not loving the truth, right? We're, we're telling ourselves a lie and how we're going to utter a lie. And then all the lies come out one right after another. Well, if we'll do it on milk... Uh, we'll do it on adultery, we'll do it on, uh, we'll do it on theft, we'll do it on uh, things that are really wrong with us. And it's only those who love the truth and are willing to have their consciences cleaned of the impurities of their own thoughts are those that are going to be able to hear the truth in these end times. So we can see here that Satan wants to use division in the church to weaken the church. 
And that's how these great apostasies are going to happen in these end times. People are going to fall away from God, not come to God in these last days. And we're beginning to see it already. We're beginning to see it already. Some of you only have to think back the past 12, 15 months, 24 months to see how much people truly want to be deceived when it comes to their Christianity. And this will continue. And there has been a great chasm in the church over the last 24 months. And the church has separated itself from itself. And as we get weaker, as we get more divided, we are going to grow weaker. And as we get weaker, Satan is going to have uh, more ability to deceive the church. Back in November of 2008, I prophesied that there would be someone come into the White House as a spiritual leader to deceive the nations and befriend the president. Nothing wrong befriending the president. I'm all for that. But someone who's going to come in who is going to lead religious leaders astray, and we're already seeing that happen. Okay, so we have to know that these things are occurring. And we can't be fooled by these things. We cannot be fooled. I'm not talking about the President of the United States. I'm not talking about political leaders. I am talking about the church and how the church has had the ability to deceive itself and will deceive itself uh, greatly in, in the end of the end of the age. I believe that there's going to be a greater distinction in these Christians because the love of the truth is going to grow cold and people who are religious leaders are going to take advantage of the ignorance of their own people. I said are going to take advantage of the ignorance of their own people. I'm seeing it happen as I closely look at a lot of ministries. I have left, you could say, the household of some ministries over the past five years completely. Even though I used to respect them, even though I used to listen to them, I don't listen to them anymore because they've taken advantage of the ignorance of their own congregations, great congregations. But they take, they've, they've, they've preached to their ignorance rather than preaching the Word of God. And that has taken advantage of them, and then now they've become mere uh, shell of a leader. They uh, look powerful, but they don't have the Spirit of God dwelling in them like they used to. Uh, when uh, Satan looks to divide this country, he's going to work on the church first. And when the church was divided over movies and then over prayer in schools and over different things, Roe versus Wade, the church is still divided over Roe versus Wade. I don't even get that. How we could be divided over killing babies in the womb is beyond me, but the church is still divided over that, and that chasm is getting greater. And there are churches who will not talk about abortion. They will not talk about Roe versus Wade or even prayer in schools. They will not talk about these things because they believe it's, it's against the building of the church. Well, we need to get people in here. No, you need to tell people the truth right from the onset. Let's not fool people what we're all about. What we're all about is change, not sin. And I'm not talking about delivering the United States. I'm talking about at least delivering the people that do come to church that are hungry for truth. People will receive the truth. Not everybody, but people will. And if you're more ambitious in, in church building than you are in, uh, in telling the truth, well, you won't tell the truth. You'll build your church. But that's not going to deliver your people. And that's where that great chasm comes in. Had a person tell me not long ago that they attended a church and they said they don't preach on money at all in that church. They don't talk about tithing at all. They simply have a big wooden box in the back and everyone gives. I said, yeah, but they don't even have their own building yet and they've been in that one building for 10 years. It ain't working for them. I said, it ain't working for them. And when you can say that prosperity isn't for today, then I can say the same thing that Margaret Thatcher said back, you know, a couple decades ago, if the Good Samaritan didn't have any money in his pocket, we never would have read about him in the Bible. Amen. He had money in his pocket, more than enough. Amen. It didn't say he gave the last of all he had to the innkeeper. He said, when I come back, because I'm a prosperous man, when I come back, I'll be able to have enough. So prosperity is for today, and it is for the Christians today. Amen. And when you begin to hear these wagging tongues say these things and speak these things against the unadulterated word of God, recognize that that is the chasm, that is the division you're looking at. Don't buy into it. Amen. 